I've had a lot of you guys ask me about this specific laptop right here. When is the review coming? Well, it's here now. This is the Lenovo Lock or LOQ, brand new for 2024. This is the AMD model and it's the 15 inch AMD model equipped with an 8845HS processor. I equipped it with a 4060 in it. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM from factory. You can upgrade that. It has a 15 inch screen, 144 Hertz, 1080p screen. This here is a very budget offering from Lenovo that's gonna to appeal towards gamers who want incredible performance, very good performance, but don't want to break the bank. This one here is gonna give you equivalent performance or very similar performance as to some of their Lenovo Legion lineup. There are some things cut here and there to basically bring the price down to separate it from the Lenovo Legion. Primarily, there's a little bit more plastic. It's not as high of a resolution screen. You know, it's not 1440p or 1600p. It's a 1080p screen. However, if you're looking to game on a budget but still get a very premium laptop, this one is very nice. This year, they've actually made quite a few upgrades. It's a lot more premium looking than it was last year. I'm actually very happy with it. I've done a live stream unboxing and testing of this laptop. This review though is gonna be a bit more refined. Let's jump into it and see if the Lenovo LOQ brand new for 2024 is the right laptop for you. Okay, let's look at the specifications for the laptop. So you can see here, there's no USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 obviously on this laptop. CPU options here, we get an 8645HS and an 8845HS. Both very, very capable CPUs. However, the 8845H does come with the better AMD Radeon graphics, 780M graphics, 3050 refresh with six gigabytes of RAM. There's the RTX 4050 with six gigabytes of RAM, and there's also the 4060. Laptop that I'm reviewing here has the Ryzen 7, and then it does have the 4060, so it's the higher end option here. Nice to see here that it does have advanced Optimus on all three GPUs there. Very, very nice there. And finally, we do have the screen options here. It looks like there are two options available, 1920 by 1080p, as well as 2560 by 1440p. In Canada, at least right now, we only have the 1080p screen, so obviously I have the 1080p screen. Both of them are quite good, to be honest. 300 nits, not super bright, and 350 nits, again, not super bright, but definitely respectable. Interestingly, both of them do have 100% sRGB, so these are not ugly screens that are gonna have really poor color space. They actually are quite nice screens, all things considered. And so here is the LOQ. I can't really act like I haven't used it before because I did a full live stream and like first test. Uh, so anyways, yeah, I've already like used it for like an entire three hour live stream and it's set up. Uh, you can see here, it's got a metal lid here, a little bit of a metal texture to it over top, plastic there on the kind of butt there. On the bottom, it is plastic. It's a hard plastic. I've taken up the screws already, you can see. It's a hard plastic on the bottom, uh, kind of like the Lenovo Think Books, which have like a premium hard plastic to it. Um, it's actually more sturdy than the Slim 5, which is interesting. It's just a different plastic type intake there. Um, you know, it's despite that intake, it's got pretty good structure on the bottom, so that's good. Uh, I really do appreciate what they've done with the kind of butt of the laptop here. Last year, the LOQ, and before that, the IdeaPad 5 Gaming, I think they called it, had like a big, large kind of vent on the back here. They've really slimmed it down here, so it does still have that stick out where you can have all of your I.O. here. However, it's very slim, like the Lenovo Legion. So they've taken some of the design language from the Lenovo Legion, and they've put it into the LOQ or the lock, whatever, uh, here, and they've decided, you know what, that works for us. So, you know, it's a step down from the Legions in some cases, you know, it's not as much metal, not quite as premium, but it doesn't sacrifice the aesthetics this year. It's still, it's a really nice looking laptop, very similar to a Legion, to be honest there. I haven't put the bottom back on, but IO is gonna be a little bit less than a Legion, but still pretty good. Right side, USB-C, kill switch there, headphone microphone combo jack, USB-A. So two USBs on that right side. The left side has none, which is weird. That's the first time I've ever seen a laptop without that, but whatever, you get them on the right side and then you actually get good eye on the back too. So USB-A, USB-A, HDMI, RJ45 and proprietary power in. So you actually get a USB-C and three USB-A plus good out as well. So uh, overall looking pretty good. Um, let's open it up here, have a look inside. Again, I've already powered this on. Uh, so you get a nice little design thing there without the little angry eye. It's not a fingerprint scanner. Already checked that. A little bit more bezel or chin here because this is a 15 inch screen rather than 16 inch. 16 inch screen will be the same width basically, but they just drop down this chin a little bit. So you get a little bit more height on the 16 by 10. This is a 16 by nine. So it's just a slightly more different aspect ratio. The one advantage of that is if you're watching shows on this, you don't get black bars. Whereas on a 16 inch laptop, you'll get black bars on the top and bottom if that matters. 
camera up top there. Um, it's actually not that wobbly of a screen. Like if you really give it, it will, but it's got two hinge on both sides there. Um, so unless you're really, you know, shaking the actual screen, it's not too bad. Um, typing wise, you know, if you're touching the laptop, there isn't wobble. So it wobbles when you hit the laptop, but when you're actually using it, it's not. That dual hinge there is nice. Uh, inside you get the black style keyboard. You can see that there, similar to basically all of Lenovo's this year really have it. All the Lenovo Legions and the LOQ's locks have that black keyboard this year, which is interesting. I prefer the silver look. I can see why people, why they went with the black is it looks nice. There's a nice contrast there. I prefer the silver because less fingerprints, but these keyboards aren't horrible for fingerprints. They're not as bad as like say the ThinkPad. ThinkPads have worse fingerprints. Um, these aren't too bad there. Uh, decent sized trackpad there. So, you know, all things considered, it's a nice looking laptop. Uh, let's look at the inside here. I, I honestly just hit my finger. I give it a little bit of torque there and just pull like that. Not hard to get off. It's a sturdy plastic bottom, as I mentioned. So it doesn't feel like it's bending, right? When you're taking it off, it's a nice sturdy bottom. So that's good. Uh, heat sinks on both of the NVMEs there. They're a little bit weirdly thin, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, it'll basically take heat away from your NVMEs your intakes there and some structure. So that looks good. These laptops are actually quite nice inside. You can see there's a little bit of compromise here and there. The battery is a little bit smaller, 60 watt hour battery. Technically it looks like they could put in a larger one. Speakers here are small, they're nothing special. Typically, you know, the lower end Lenovo Legion and LOQ locks kind of stuff is serviceable, I would say at best. Um, that's about that there. Uh, inside you do get uh, upgradable RAM, which is really nice. So you can upgrade the RAM here. Very important in my opinion that you can take that RAM up. So you can take it up to two sticks of DDR. This does ship with one stick of 16 gigabytes. Uh, it's SK Hynix, good RAM. You can see that there. Uh, DDR5 memory does run in dual channel as it is. So you don't have to have two sticks of memory. It's not like it's gonna be massively nerfed by having one stick on DDR5 like you would with DDR4. I believe it does still run slightly faster if you have two sticks. There's more late, less latency um, overall if you have two sticks, but you're looking at almost no real world performance gains realistically, uh, but you don't have to. It's not an absolute requirement on this laptop here because you are gonna get still good performance out of that single stick there. Uh, you do get a 2242 size NVMe on this side, which is a little weird. However, you can just move it over. So you just take that out there and you can expand it to 2280. Fine, and it's a good SK Hynix, so no issues there. Left side, second NVMe, 2280. So two NVMEs you can get in here. You can upgrade the RAM here. Wi-Fi is, of course, upgradable on the left there too. Cooling is nice. You get uh, large fans, actually, on this thing with nice fin density, uh, dual heat pipe on both of them, large heat pipes, and then some basic VRM cooling there. So overall, I mean, considering this is a budget laptop, I mean, it is actually quite cheap for what it is. It looks really nice inside. A lot of brands struggle to get this kind of internal quality but keep the costs down. Lenovo is managing to do that on these LOQs, locks, keeping the costs down by cutting in other areas, but not compromising on things like cooling and upgradability and performance, which is what I like to see. Like put a little plastic on the bottom of the laptop if need be, if that can allow you to have the internals of the laptop look this nice. Okay, let's check the weight of the laptop here. So probably just set it like that. Here we go. So 2,360 grams, that's a little over five pounds. You're gonna be at about, yeah, about around nine, 850 to 900 grams or so. So about a pound and a little under maybe 1.2 pounds, 1.3 pounds, something like that. So overall the weight is not that high. I mean, if you're looking for a relatively portable 16 inch, 15 inch gaming laptop that is still thicker and has a fairly robust cooling system inside, I mean, this is a good option for you because you do get that thicker. Uh, you do still get that really enhanced cooling, but it's not quite as heavy as some of the Lenovo Legion counterparts, like the 5 Pro, for example, would be quite a bit heavier. Uh, this would be more in line with the 5 Slim in terms of weight. All right, let's have a quick look at the keyboard here. We'll do a quick typing test. The keyboard is actually really nice on this. It's like, it's a Lenovo Legion keyboard is what it is, realistically. There's no real difference. It's like the Lenovo Legion Slim, I guess, 5 Slim keyboard. Uh, more than it would be like the 7i or some of the other ones, uh, which have slightly larger physical keycaps are a little bit larger on those. These have slightly thinner keycaps. The actual keycaps themselves are slightly slimmer, but they still have tons of travel. Uh, so let's just do the quick typing test here. Yeah, 10 out of 10. It is what it is. I mean, it's a Lenovo Legion keyboard, basically. 
uh, the slim style with the slightly smaller keys, but has just as much travel. Very, very confident when typing on this. Part of it is I am used to these laptops. I use a lot of Legions in general, Locks, Lenovo's in general, I'm used to it. But even from the beginning, I've always said they have the best keyboard and that stands true. Uh, trackpad does not glass, but it is still very smooth and it has a nice click to it. I like loud clicks, that's just my thing. So one of the places that Lenovo does keep the cost slightly down on these laptops is the screen. It's not gonna have a 1600p, 100% DCI-P screen, you know, it's not like that, but it does still have a decent screen for what it is. So you can see here it is a 1080p screen, and then it's a very high refresh rate, so you get 144 hertz, and you can do dynamic 72 or 144, which is really cool. It doesn't drop you all the way down to 60, so you still get some fluidity when you're moving around on battery. So you can see here, it doesn't have 100% DCI-P, uh, but it is overall a very bright screen, and it's still pretty good, especially for a gaming laptop, it's not bad. Typically, budget gaming laptops can have pretty bad screens. This one here is not bad, realistically. See, it's, it's really not that bad. The reds do look fairly vibrant here. And then the blacks here, I'll bring that down. You can see here there's no IPS, but I've already had this laptop for like a week or so, um, and I've been using it and testing it here and there. Screen looks just fine, realistically. For 1080p, it's just fine. You come over here, um, you know, it's not going to pop like an OLED or anything like that. It's not going to pop like a 100% DCI-P screen, but it's still a good screen. High refresh rate, overall good color space, and pretty bright overall. And remember, you have to keep in mind the price of this laptop is very low, so... Another area they tend to keep costs down a bit on these more budget-friendly offerings is audio. You're not probably going to get behemoth speakers or anything like that, but let's have a quick listen here. Yeah, so more than serviceable. Again, it's not gonna beat out the Lenovo Legion, you know, the 7 series. They have way better speakers, um, you know, or an Asus G14 or G16 or something. Those, they're not in the same class as this, uh, but this is fine. I mean, it's better than a lot of the like cheap, low-end um, kind of uh, gaming options out there. And it definitely beats out a lot of those, you know, professional kind of business laptops. Those often have really bad speakers. So overall, the sound is pretty good on this laptop here. So first things first, let's look at the software. It comes with Game Pass, which is nice. Most of the Lenovo gaming stuff comes with Game Pass. Uh, I've added just like Cinebench and that a couple things. What else is in here that I didn't see? I added that. Xbox, Legion. It does have the Legion type software because even though it's a lock, it's a Legion realistically. It's just like a more budget offering. McAfee can come off. Oop, what's that? More McAfee. Oh, it's new. Okay, and because this is kind of a Legion of sorts, even though they call it the lock, uh, you get typically what you get on a Legion here. So you do have your three uh, thermos, thermal modes, quiet, balance, and performance. You can also just use function Q here, function Q to switch to them, balanced, performance, silent. And what's gonna happen there is it's going to allocate less or more watts to the GPU and CPU. Because this is an AMD machine, 8845HS, and because it uses a 4060, you will absolutely be able to game on silent mode and get very, very good performance. So you can throw it in performance when you need, you know, the absolute most behemoth power. You can throw it into balance mode and typically you're only gonna lose, you know, a few percentages off the performance. I very rarely use performance mode on these laptops. And because it's AMD, you can throw it into silent mode and that AMD is not gonna choke on very low watts. Looks like, <clears throat> Looks like you do get some GPU overclocking. You can go up to 200 megahertz on the clocks, 400 megahertz on the VRAM, which is good. You can turn that on or off, it's up to you. Uh, sure, and other things like that. You can see here, you can do system updates in here. This is where you're gonna get things like BIOS updates. Typically you wanna get um, a lot of your drivers from here. You're gonna wanna get your BIOS updates, all that kind of stuff from here. Uh, you don't really get any RGB settings down here. With RGB, you basically just have white, so it goes low, high, and off. Low, high, and off. Uh, this keyboard doesn't actually have RGB, but it does have backlighting, which is nice. Again, another area where they just keep the cost down just slightly from the Lenovo Legion stuff. Uh, I don't really use RGB, I actually, but I do like a backlit keyboard. 
Okay, we'll just do some Cinebench runs here. We'll have the performance after this portion here. We can actually see what the results are, but I do just wanna check noise here in the three different modes. This is balanced mode. Big drop in noise, and typically you don't lose a lot of performance. Like, we'll see later, but it should perform very well on balance mode. Silent mode should really drop it down. It'll take a second to cool off. Um, but even silent mode, we should be getting good performance here. You can see the Cinebench is still running at a good rate here, and the noise will drop down considerably. And let's look at the, uh, if there's any throttling here. So we're on performance mode. A little bit, actually. There actually is a little bit of throttling. Let's see once the fans kick up there if it's able to keep those temperatures down. Okay, and here we are in three different modes for Cinebench. You can see here that we're getting relatively high scores in all cases for silent and then balance in the middle. Performance on the right there. We're gonna be looking at over 15,000 in all modes, which is surprising for silent mode that it did so well. And then up in performance mode, you know, we're getting over 16,000 or so. So very, very good performance. Surprisingly good performance on silent mode, especially. Wi-Fi here is very fast, obviously. We're getting 500 or 600 megabytes a second download upload overall. Battery life is also quite good with this AMD processor. You can see here that when idling at about 95% battery life, we're draining around six or seven watts or so. So that's gonna give us approximately uh, eight, nine, or even 10 hours of idle time. If you're just kind of browsing around, you'll probably get seven or eight hours. And then I did some 1080p YouTube here, 1080p 60. And you can see here that we're probably gonna get about five to six hours of 1080p YouTube when just watching a show. Here's a look at the webcam. It's not bad. Uh, it's actually doing a pretty good job with contrast, not kind of under washing my face or making me kind of ghostly looking. It's pretty decent, all things considered. Uh, the polling rate looks fine. We'll listen to how the audio is, but overall it looks like a pretty decent webcam. Honestly, for such a budget laptop, I actually consider it to be a good webcam. Okay, and here's the fun part of the video. We'll do some game testing. I'll use Baldur's Gate as my initial part where I test the different power modes. I usually do this. So we'll start off on performance mode here, and I just want to check the noise. Turn the game down. About 56. Let's drop down to balanced. Immediate drop. Around 50. And now we'll go down to silent mode. way down. Actually, my ceiling vent is now noisier. So uh, let's look at the performance here just in general. We'll test another demanding game after this, but uh, let's just get a rough idea here what we can get for performance. Uh, so we probably don't need DLSS because we're at 1080p, so we can probably just do 1080p Ultra, realistically. Uh, we're not really getting any scaling here. So uh, yeah, 1080p scaling, and we're on, let's go with performance mode to start. So 1080p native, and you know you're going to get your high frame rates there. 95. It'll drop down when you're over here around these people, obviously. This is the worst part of the game, by the way. All right. If you get into areas that don't have tons of NPCs, you know, early most of the game in general is going to be more like this. Over 100 FPS, and, you know, we'll reset it, and you'll see, you know, the lows will stay up higher. Now, I do want to throw on balance mode, see the difference. And, uh... The wattage here dropped down. You can see the CPU is down a little bit, 35, 40. And the GPU is way down. We're at 60, right? Way down. And the performance is, I guess, like down a bit, like a few frames or something. And now what we'll do is we'll kick over to silent mode, right? And on silent mode, we're still above 60 in these areas. Out on the street, we're probably more like 45 or 50. Oh, we're actually, let me reset that. We're actually doing better than I thought out here. And that's the thing. You can see now the wattage, if I can get here, we're at 27 watts on the CPU at a max. We're actually sitting closer to 20. It's a very CPU intensive scene. And then the GPU is at 55 watts, up even below that, at 50, below 50 sometimes. It just really shows how efficient these AMD chips are when they're paired with something like a 40, 50, 60, or 70. Okay, and Ghost of Tsushima launched yesterday, uh, so I decided to buy it. And so I've never played the game. I know what it is, but I've never played it. I actually own it on PlayStation, but 
never played it. So we'll just see how it performs here. I'm obviously at the beginning of the game. All right, so we're just gonna jump in, I guess, into the game. We're at high, 1080p, just quality DLSS, just a little bit, just to keep this frame rate smooth here. I'll try to monitor performance while we're playing, but yeah, so this rock solid. You can see, you know, we're at like 80 to 100 FPS. Okay, here we are. Excellent frame rate, to be honest, on high. Can we turn the settings up? I, I'm not sure if there was a higher setting. Let's go very high. Yeah, so now we're at very high. Didn't really make a difference. Excellent performance, actually. Let's throw it on balanced. See what we can get by with balanced. Yeah, look at that. Almost no drop in performance. That's surprising. Wow. It's so quiet, too. Let's throw it on silent mode and just see what we can get by here. It might drop down on silent. Even silent is doing very well, actually. Sony did not want to flop this one, obviously. They made sure it was well optimized. Yeah, excellent performance here. You can throw it in silent mode and get well above 60 with lows of 48. Outstanding performance here. Okay, so what are my thoughts on the Lenovo Lock or LOQ here, brand new 2024, 15 inch AMD model. It's very good, actually. I mean, last year I liked this laptop quite a bit. I thought it was an excellent budget offering for people who wanted very good performance, really good cooling, lots of upgradability, but didn't want to break the bank. I'm not exactly sure how Lenovo makes money on these here. I mean, they, this was a very cheap laptop for me to buy. It has really good build quality, a 4060 in it, brand new 8845HS processor. You get two SODIMM slots in there. You get two NVMe slots in there. Really good cooling as well. The only like negative, I guess I'd say, is it's only a 1080p screen. It's not gonna be a 1600p screen or 1440p screen. Some people may prefer that anyways because you're gonna be able to play a lot of the games just natively. You're not gonna need a lot of DLSS or any DLSS in this case for playing a lot of games on this laptop here. So, I mean, I don't need to go into too much about it. I mean, the only real negatives are it doesn't have you know a full metal chassis or anything like that. It does have a little bit of plastic here and there. Again, price point, it makes sense. Uh, the speakers aren't mind boggling, again, price point. But otherwise I can't really see anything really wrong with the laptop. It's fantastic for what it is and for the price that it is.